on this eve of Christmas to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to meditate on the mystery of that incarnation by which our nature is redeemed, and to receive with joy the message of our salvation. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the Gospel of St. Luke, beginning in chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man who was named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and, his king, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor and lowly. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility and so to be made one with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let us pray. O God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the spouse of his virgin mother, give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Two angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the The story of the star from the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning in chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, 
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen as at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see the glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strain from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made yourself known in your Son, Jesus, Redeemer of the world. We pray that his birth as a human child will set us free from the old slavery of our sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hill town of Bethlehem, how shall we see thee lie? Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by yet in the dark streets shine the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight the story of Jesus' birth from the gospel of St. Luke 
beginning in chapter 2, verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children and to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. pray. Merciful and gracious God, as we gather to celebrate this Christmas Eve, we're reminded of your great love through your Son, Jesus Christ. We're reminded that his coming is the greatest gift of all. Lord, open our hearts to hear this and grow us through this message. Help us to remember and celebrate in the birth of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I was young, the approach of Christmas meant it was time to make a Christmas list. Now, I grew up before the internet was a thing, so coming up with my list first involved going through catalogs that arrived through the mail. Normally, a Sears catalog to be precise, and writing down everything I imagined I had to have. Maybe some of you have similar memories of Christmas and Christmas lists. So I recently was doing a bit of looking around on the internet and I came across a website with children's letters to Santa, the things that they asked for. What I loved about them as I began to read through them was the combination of honesty and blatant greed that was on display. So I figured I'd share a few of these letters with you today. Here's the first one. Dear Santa, I've been a good boy and a bad boy this year. I've been good because I helped my grandma. I've been bad because I don't want to walk my dog. Please bring me some Legos. I like that because he admitted to both the good and the bad and thought maybe they canceled each other out. Here's another one. Dear Santa, if you bring presents that need batteries, bring the batteries too. That's that helpful kind of reminder how many Christmases go past where uh, someone gets a gift and they don't have the batteries to go with it. Here's another one. I like this one. Dear Santa, Mom is on a diet, so we don't have cookies anymore. 
Have some of my Cheez-Its instead. They are good too. Please remember to bring a gift for my kitten. Here's, I, I like this one a lot. It says, Dear Santa, you better, uses the word better, bring my pony. So it's not just bring me a pony, but already claimed it as, as uh, his own. Better bring my pony this year or there will be consequences. So it's a threat, a threat for what they want. Uh, how about this one? Dear Santa, please text my dad. He has my whole list. Um, yeah, that's technology catching up with us. Text my dad. I, I can't bother to write down on a letter my list of things. Here's a good one. I, I think I could have written this minus the iPad as a kid. It says, Dear Santa, I want an iPad and night vision goggles. And then in all caps and an exclamation point, no clothes. Uh, last one here. Dear Santa, if you can't buy what I want, take it easy on yourself and just give me money. I uh, thought that was a lot of fun to look at some of those. Uh, thinking about that, we've come together on this Christmas Eve celebration to rejoice in the Christmas gifts God has given to us. Today I want to remember and reflect on these gifts God has given. And as we look at these gifts, we see the first gift God gives us is the good news that we don't need to be afraid. After Jesus was born, God sent an angel with a message to some of the shepherds in the nearby fields. The message was this, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. This angel's message is amazing in so many ways. For starters, the angel says, don't be afraid. And given the pandemic that's ongoing and all the struggles that it's brought with it during this past year, the message that we don't need to be afraid is especially meaningful to us now. The reminder for us is that regardless of all of our hurts or pains or suffering, there's nothing to be afraid of. And the reason we no longer need to be afraid is because of the message the angel was delivering. I want you to notice that the message isn't just good news, it's described as good news of great joy. And the angel further says this, good news of great joy is meant for all people. The birth of Jesus is the good news that takes away our fear. So God's first gift is the good news that we don't need to be afraid. And the second gift that God gives us is the reminder that God's story is still the same. I can't remember a Christmas that is well, felt as strange as this one. Things we've historically taken for granted as being well a part of the Christmas celebration suddenly seem different and difficult and even impossible. But as strange as this Christmas has seemed, the message at the heart of it is still and always is the same. That message is revealed in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And so in this year when everything seems a little out of place and not quite right, the story of Jesus remains our one constant. We've come together in virtual fashion today to celebrate God's unchanging story, just as followers of Jesus have done for nearly 2,000 years, telling the story through readings, through messages, through songs, 
the story remains the same. And that's God's second gift for us. The third gift that God gives us is the knowledge that we count. That we count. One of the interesting things about the account of Jesus' birth is that it begins simply enough with the census. Verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The typical purpose of a census back then, and still today, is to determine who's recognized, who matters, and effectively, who counts. Of note here is the fact that this census caused, well, a seemingly insignificant couple to journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The message of Christmas, the message of the census, is a reminder that we count and that we matter to God. Jesus' birth is all about the fact that you as an individual count enough for God to take on flesh and to die for you. God's third gift is the knowledge that you do indeed count in God's sight. My prayer for you this day, as you reflect on these gifts, is that the Lord would bless you and keep you in and through them. Let's pray. Gracious God, again today we are so blessed to gather and thankful in the name of Jesus Christ who's come into this world to give us life. Lord, strengthen us in this good news today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen.
The Lesson of the Light from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name. He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. 